This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. I'm standing in front of one of the oldest lighthouses in the Bahamas. This lighthouse behind me is the famous Candy Stripe Lighthouse in Hope Town on the Abaco Islands in the Bahamas. This week, we're going to look for the four different endemic Bahamian bird species found on the Abaco Islands, and in particular, we're going in quest of our golden bird for this show, the Bahama Swallow. Let's go birding. Got it. Looks like we can get out into the ocean. I'm about to get in the cage with Australian saltwater crocodiles. And I'm going to fly like the birds. Oh! I will never forget this moment. Let's go birding. Like a scattered string of pearls strewn across a cobalt blue plate, the islands of the Bahamas stretch from their most northerly point in the Abacos, south to Andros and Inagua, across 500 miles of the Caribbean Sea. As the site of Columbus's first landfall in the Americas, the Bahamas have a long and storied history. With over 2,000 islands and keys, the Bahamas are home to some of the best beaches diving, fishing and birding in the world. Join us on a fascinating three-part series on the endemic birds of the Bahamas. From the Inagua wood star, to the Abaco parrot, to the Bahama oriole of Andros, join us as we discover the amazing bird life, natural beauty, culture, people and food across this pristine and biodiverse island chain. Birding in Abaco is nothing short of spectacular, providing a host of Bahamian endemics like Bahama Mockingbird, Bahama Yellowthroat and Bahama Warbler. Join us along with 8th generation Bahamian bird guide Reggie Patterson as he leads the way to all the birding hotspots on this sun-drenched, bird-rich island in quest of our golden bird for this episode, the Bahama Swallow. Let's go birding. Let's go birding! One of the really unique birds on the Abaco Islands is the Bahama parrot. And this bird is really unique because there's two populations found in the Bahamas. One on Inagua and one here on the Abaco Islands. This particular race actually nests in the ground and is one of the few species of parrots worldwide to do this. Reggie's lived on the island for many, many years. He was born here and he's grown quite accustomed to these ground nesting parrots. The population is supposed to be between eight and 10,000, up considerably from the beginning of the century when it was only you know, three to 4,000. They have few natural enemies. Red-tailed hawks do take a few very young ones. They've been protected since about 1970. Back in the bad old days, people used to hunt them, but that's a thing of the past now. We've got a West Indian woodpecker, just flew into the top of that dry, looks like a dry gumbo limbo, you got him? Oh yeah, yeah I do, that definitely is a West Indian woodpecker. Island birding is very, very different to birding on the mainland. A bird like the West Indian woodpecker, which is quite ubiquitous on other Caribbean and West Indian islands, strangely is very rare, absent on most of the Bahamian islands, 
and it's only found on three of them. Oh, here comes a parrot, just oh, yeah. flew into the yeah. top of the tree. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we've got the yeah. West Indian woodpecker and a Bahamas parrot. There are a couple of other parrots in the tree further away, but you know, the two are just kind of side by side, wow. Quite a nice Caribbean specialty bird mm -hmm. to be found on just one or two islands yep. in the Bahamian chain. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. And sponsored in part by Manfrotto, complete solutions for photographers and videographers. Visit manfrotto.us. And by Pelagic Polarized Sunglasses. And by the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism and the Islands of the Bahamas. Birding is better in the Bahamas. This morning we're in the 20,000 acre Abaco National Park. This is in the southern part of Abaco and this is a great place to go for pine forest specialty species. Birds like Bahama yellowthroat, olive capped warblers and other species that we're going to be looking for this morning. There's a Bahama yellowthroat calling behind me sitting in the bright sun, preening and calling with this beautiful yellow throat and this nice black mask. What a stunning bird. It's amazing how confiding this bird is. So one thing that's obvious is that common yellow throats, which are in the Bahamas for half the year or maybe even a little more, they are usually found around water and the Bahama yellow throat almost never is. It stays low down in the understory, either in the pine yard, which is where we are now, or in a mixed broadleaf environment, what we call the caucus. But it's almost always low, low down on the ground. The most visible attribute that distinguishes the Bahama yellow throat from the common yellow throat is its size. It's about 20% larger, really chunky bird, and it's also got a little bit of white edging to the black mask, right? That's correct, yes. Boy, that guy is singing away. I mean, he's, he's going crazy. He's within a few feet of us as if we just, you know, we're not even around. And I, <laughs> I, I assume he's trying to attract a mate. He's, he's really working at it. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. Let's go and see what else we can find in this wonderful pine forest. Right now I'm filming a loggerhead kingbird, a really, really big, chunky kingbird with a nice big head. Very handsome fellow, quite confiding. And we've got a whole bird party around us here. This happens often in forest, especially pine forest, is it'll be very, very quiet, and then you'll move into an area where suddenly there's a lot of bird noise. There's a Cuban emerald, you see that? Beautiful. Yeah. Cuban emerald, lots and lots of pine warblers flitting around. There's a young pine warbler over there, quite yep. low down, mm -hmm. close to the road. Yeah, feeding. Uh -huh. yep. got and yep. we've got another sort of regional endemic called an olive capped warbler. This bird is found, I think, only on two islands in the Bahamas, correct? Only on Abaco and Grand Bahama in the Bahamas and in parts of Cuba. Nowhere else. Nowhere else in the world. Olive capped warbler little seed eaters in the understory of the forest here. We've got grass quits, which we're seeing flitting around, males and females. Oh, amazing bird party, mm -hmm. just flitting through. So many different species of birds. Yep. Really, really good to see. Got a beautiful, tiny Bahama wood star flitting around, feeding. This is a separate species to the Inagua wood star, which was recently split from the Bahama wood star. Both of them only found on the Bahama Islands. So for a lot of these warbler species that live right in the top of trees, 
I've adapted my scope setup slightly. I've left my tripod and just brought a sandbag so that I can get straight up perpendicular to the trees and roll some pretty good footage. Quite difficult to pick out these warblers right at the top of the trees, but once you're on them, it's really useful to have the sandbag so that you can just move, make slight, slight movements, and you're 100% steady as well, which is really, really good and really useful. Also, the one thing you've got to watch out for in these forests is poison wood. This stuff over here, nasty. It gets on your skin, causes a big welt and a rash. So you want to try and stay away from the sap of this nasty little beast. Finally, we've got our Bahama Warbler. What a magnificent bird. It hitches itself up and down the tree trunks, much in the way of a black and white warbler or a nuthatch, perfectly adapted to living in these pine forests. And it's got an exceptionally long bill for a warbler. So what it's doing as it's hitching itself up and down the trees is it's flipping the bark from side to side and grabbing the insects underneath. He's just flown, just flown to that tree there. Wow. What a beautiful warbler, bright, bright yellow, nice black streaking on the side. And it's hard to believe that we thought that this was a subspecies of the yellow-throated warbler because the habits are so different. Yellow-throated warblers that we find in Florida and other parts of the United States normally love palm trees and they sit at the top of palm trees. And this warbler, totally different habits. It lives in these pine forests and it hitches just like a black and white warbler totally unique that long bill but otherwise quite similar to yellow-throated warbler and even has quite a similar call too yes this is the hardest of the five resident warblers to be found in the Bahamian Islands and we've just got it it's taken us quite a while we've been out here for two days and it's now about 11 o'clock on our second morning it's hot but we're happy what a great bird, another Bahamian endemic, the Bahama warbler. Now, let's go swim with some pigs. We'll be right back. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. And by the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism and the Islands of the Bahamas. Birding is better in the Bahamas. The sandy and rocky shoreline of Abaco is home to a whole variety of plover species. At different times of the year, you'll find different species of plover. In winter, for example, semi-palmated and piping plovers are common on these sandy stretches of beaches. And in the summertime, there are great views at Wilson's plover, one of my favorite small plovers with this really large, oversized bill. And we've got probably about five or six of them behind me right now on this rocky outcrop on Abaco. Welcome to Green Turtle Main Treasure Key Ferry Landing and we're gonna head over to No Name Key where the pigs are and I just say about 50 pigs now I mean there's a lot of little ones there I mean it's a beautiful spot beautiful beach beautiful area for family and kids to go and have a good time first thing in the morning when you know you're the first one there that's the only time you really got to worry about those pigs you know they're going a little frenzy but like you know a lot of people are around now you know it's the busy time of the year so they're getting feed on a regular basis so Do they swim they swim once you don't go on the beach too early if you stay off a little and you throw some food out they'll come out well, swim with yeah, you. swim out to the boat, and depending on the tide too, you know. Yeah. So tide's coming in right now, so it would be perfect for them to come out if they're not too full. Nice. Yeah, but they swim. Yeah. They got webbed feet. Oh yeah, <laughs> like dogs. Oh yeah, fast too, and they like treats like hot dogs, dog food, stuff like that. Right. Oh yeah, they they go crazy for that kind of stuff. Oh, we got some treats for them today. Perfect. We got All some right. Nice stuff. Sounds good. All right. All Let's right. Swim with the pigs. Excellent. Wink wink. Sweet. Well, here we are, No Name Key, otherwise known as Piggyville, with the famous occupants of this island, the pigs. 
let's go and have a swim with these very famous residents of this little key. This is something that's on everybody's bucket list and I've just got to swim with the pigs on No Name Key. This is something you've got to do when you come to the Bahamas. You can go birding, take a boat out here and really have some fun with swimming swine. Well, that's something you don't get to do every day. Thanks so much, Captain. Really it's a appreciate pleasure. it. That was awesome. All right. And stick with us. When we come back, we're going in quest of the endangered Bahama Swallow. This is just another day in paradise, bro. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and sponsored in part by Manfrotto, complete solutions for photographers and videographers. Visit manfrotto.us. And by the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism and the Islands of the Bahamas. Birding is better in the Bahamas. This afternoon we're with Bahama Swallow researcher Maya Wilson from Virginia Tech University and she's got a Bahama Swallow nest that she's been monitoring. We're going to go and check it out and also learn a little bit more about the life history of this endangered bird. Let's do it. My name is Maya Wilson. I'm a graduate student at Virginia Tech. I'm here on Abaco Island studying the Bahama Swallow. It's an endangered species that only lives in the Bahamas. It's a Bahamian endemic species. The Bahama Swallow is a secondary cavity nester, which means that it will only build a nest inside a cavity, but that it can't actually create that cavity for itself. So it relies actually on an other species to create those cavities for them mostly the woodpeckers. The Bahama Swallow only lives in the northern Bahamas, which would include Abaco, Grand Bahama, Andros, and previously New Providence. It seems to have been extirpated from New Providence. It's not entirely clear when, but at this point they seem to only be limited to those other three islands. But they seem to be doing pretty well, especially on Abaco Island in the south in particular. The population here seems to be doing really well in this pine forest. So what they'll typically do is lay three eggs inside the cavity. After about 15 days or so of the female incubating the eggs, the nestlings will hatch, at which point both parents will start to feed the nestlings. Nestlings are inside the nest for approximately 24 days or so, at which point they'll leave the nest, and that's when you'll see them sitting on the power lines, along the, the main roadways, especially sitting in their family groups, eventually joining larger family groups. So that's when you'll start to see these big flocks of them hanging around. And at that point, they seem to switch habitat a little bit and move into other areas where they can forage for the rest of the year. So the most recent study that's been done on the Bahama Swallow was Paul Allen's study, which took place actually on Grand Bahama Island. And that study was conducted in 1995. So it's been over 20 years now since someone has studied this bird. In 1995, the Bahama Swallow was listed as vulnerable and now it's listed as endangered. And the main reason for that is that it, there seems to have been a pretty sharp decline in their populations over the last 30 years or so. There are very few estimates actually available, but the ones that we do have seem to indicate that the Bahama Swallow population has had a severe drop. And so that's one of the things that I'm trying to figure out is how many swallows are left on the islands, where they're doing the best. One of the tools that we use to monitor the Bahama Swallow nests, especially in the snags, is what we call a peeper camera, which is actually just a specialized camera that you mount on the end of an extendable pole. And then you can put that camera up all the way to the cavity and then inside of the cavity you can get a live feed of the contents of that nest. So we can see whether there are eggs, whether there are nestlings, and hopefully, eventually, whether they've successfully left the nest and fledged. This year we've monitored, well we found about 40 nests and monitored I think around 
half of that, around 20. So that gives us an idea of the success of those nests, how many of those eggs actually end up hatching, how many of the hatchlings actually end up leaving the nest as, as fledglings. And that gives us an idea of how well the Bahama swallow population is doing on the island. We came to visit one of the last active snag nests. So this nest is in the pine forest in the southern part of Abaco. And what we can see actually is a nestling sticking its head out of the cavity. It's old enough at this point that it's probably one of two or three nestlings that's in there. And they're getting old enough that they're starting to kind of poke their head out and see what the world looks like. So within a couple of days, they'll probably fledge from the nest and start foraging around with their parents. And that's when they'll join the larger flocks and forage within those flocks. And so what the adults are doing now is they're actually catching insects flying around and then they're going in, they land at the nest hole mm -hmm. and then they go in and then they obviously, they stay in there for a couple of seconds, they're feeding the youngsters yeah, and then they then pop out again, right they look out. around and then yep. they fly out again. Exactly, yeah. Back to foraging for the nestlings. Yep. And yeah. themselves a little bit here and there. <laughs> but the nestlings are pretty hungry. Well, this is a new generation of Bahama swallows that are about to fledge in the next few days and add to the declining numbers of the species worldwide. So hopefully these babies that will leave this nest eventually will bolster the population and bode well for the Bahama swallow for years to come. That's our golden bird. See you next week. If you are a bird watcher and you love exotic birds, Come to the Bahamas, birdings better in the Bahamas. Run, come see Bahama Warla, Bahama Swallow, Bahama Pirates and Abaco, Bahama Orioles and Andres, Inagua Marching Flamingo, Bahama Mockingbird, Bahama Woodstar, Yellow Throat and Pearly Eye Trasha, Certified Professional Guides. Colleen, Casper, Dave, and Latia, Lindo, Tara, and Steven, Randolph, and Renal. If you're a bird watcher and you love exotic birds,